Welcome back to RG Geek. So you want to play your GameCube games on the Wii U as if they were virtual console games, right? So I was watching Gaming Off The Grid and they said, It is not backwards compatible with the Nintendo GameCube, which the Nintendo Wii is, so the Wii still serves a purpose. Yes, it's... And they inspired me to make this video. So, what are you going to need? You're going to need a hacked Wii U, obviously the gamepad, it's part of the Wii U, a Windows PC, an SD card, and obviously officially licensed GameCube games. Optional, I recommend it, I'd say bring in an external hard drive. If you're thinking about hacking your Wii U or you've already hacked it, you likely already have an external hard drive connected. But if you don't, be sure to make sure it's one that has external power, because you need a powered USB drive to uh, work with the Wii U. Also, if you want to use authentic GameCube controllers, obviously you need GameCube controller. A third-party ones also work. Um, you will need a Wii U converter for the GameCube to the Wii U. That's a USB converter. Well, there are other third-party adapters that'll work. And you will need a Wiimote. To get into there. If you just want to play on the gamepad, all of the this stuff, all of this is optional. So, and yes, you heard me right. You will be able to play games on your Wii U gamepad with directly with these buttons right here. Just like this. And you're in. And if you want, you can decide at the beginning, no, I just want to play with the GameCube controllers. And you can also set that, and I'll show you how to do that as well. Alright, let's get started. First we need to get Tcon Moon's Wii VC Injector 3.0.1 Mod 12. So you can see the address up here. I will also have this address in the description in the video below. So you want to scroll down past the little Chinese. You want to grab this Tcon Moon RAR file right here. Okay, and I already have it loaded here, so we'll start running it here. And you'll see it defaults to Wii Retail Injection. You need to go over and choose the GC for GameCube Retail Injection. And then we'll need to set up the SD card. So Nintendo SD card menu. And you'll see I don't have my SD card yet in the computer, so I'll put that in now. It's recognized. And, but only for this, there you go. So for this to see it, I will need to reload the drive list. And there it is. And first I'll need to click and download the latest Nintendo from GitHub. Downloading, download complete. And now I need to generate the Nintendo config file. So what do you need over here? There's a lot of options, but the way I have it configured is I have M card emulation this is really important because the Wii U doesn't have a memory card slot, so you have to emulate that, and that happens right on the SD card. And you might think you want forced widescreen, but think about this. This is putting in widescreen hacks. So that also may cause other programs or other games like uh, F-Zero GX to have problems. So you think about it if you really want that. Uh, the other one I really like is the Wii U widescreen. So this basically just always defaults the game to be widescreen. But you'll see there's an option later. If you want to set it for um, uh, 4.3, such as games that don't have widescreen options, you can do that later per game. I'll show you how to do that. Memory card blocks. I'll set, I set it for 251 because the largest that's um, possible. Uh, I did notice with, say, PGA Tour 2004 that there's an issue with not having enough blocks if you choose 59 because it also, not only does it save game data, it saves EA profile data. And all these have their own uh, sandbox for their memory. If you wanted to have the uh, multiple games on one memory card, for example, if one game shares information with another game, you can choose this mem card multi. But for most people, I'd say you want to leave that off. All right, so we did this. Uh, you click Generate here. I've already done that myself, so I'm not gonna click that for myself now. 
And let's go back into the other options here. So I'm going to pick a game. I own a Crazy Taxi. So I'm going to put Crazy Taxi. I have this here as an inkit.iso file, but it can also obviously support ISO files as well. And sometimes you'll find that it doesn't work with an inkit file in some cases. And then in that case, you really do need to uh, rip your game as an ISO instead. So first we'll download images from this repo. You just click it and wait a couple seconds and boom, we have virtual console image right here for it and an icon to go on your virtual console, on your um, gamepad as well. So going down, just go across the tabs. Um, if your game has a second disc, then you would click this and put in the second disc right here and that will build the second disc also onto the game. And obviously, if you want to do extra configuration, like the logo, the sound, boot boot sound, I mean, this is all very advanced stuff. If you want to bother with that, you can do that. But I just always just leave it. Uh, always check. Just check to see what the name is. Sometimes it's like in all caps or it has extra letters or something you don't need. So I would just um, uh, check that every single time just to make sure this is going to appear the way you want it to appear. And also note that you can't put accented letters. So... That's a no-no. All right, the stuff down here is for Wii, so we're not gonna to touch that. This is GameCube. Go over to Advanced. So the so first option is Force 4.3. So what I do is I go to this page here, which lists all the GameCube games with alternate display modes. And then I would scroll down to find my game. So you see the columns here are NTSC 40p, PAL 60, but the one we really care about here is widescreen. And this will tell you if the game has a native widescreen form. This isn't a, a hack, a widescreen hack, but it's if the game itself supported widescreen, which is crazy because it's over 20 years ago and there are games that supported widescreen. Typically the games that were released toward the end of the uh, life cycle. Oh, I skipped past it, Crazy Taxi. Let's look, third column, X. So this does not support widescreen. So let's go back in to the app and we'll say Force 4.3 for Nintendo. All right, uh, if you want, you can also, if you never ever want to use the uh, gamepad as a controller, you can check this as well, and it'll never ask you. If you do check it, every time you go into the game, it'll say, do you want to use the gamepad as a controller? So I'm not going to check that because I might want to use it as a controller for this game. And then I go to build title. And so I have this blurred out right here, but if you search for Wii U common key, you should be able to find this key in here. And uh, also search for the that one title key site to put this key here. But unfortunately for legal reasons, I can't put that key in this tutorial. The output directory you need to set. So let's go find this uh, directory here. So now I'm gonna choose the folder I set up called WUP. GC and hit build. This process should take 5 to 15 minutes depending on how uh, fast your computer is and just wait for that WUP folder. Here we can see it finished. Just hit OK and notice it reminds you that you need to run the signature patch before you launch your title. So we'll be sure to do that. So we'll open the directory here that we set. We can see it loaded this WUP folder here. And let's go back and go to the SD card. And we'll need to add an install folder here in the root directory. This is very important. It has to be called installed. And we'll call it install. Now we need to take that other folder, so let's open a new one, new window, and open the directory. Okay, now it wants to do that, fine. Oh, Windows, you're so great. This is why I use Mac. Okay, anyway, I'll copy this over to the install folder here, boom. All right, 
and then we just eject it like you normally do. Right click here and hit eject. And sometimes it'll say it's in use, just try again. Usually that'll clear it out. So we're done with this part. Just to note at the end, if you want these steps again, there's a beautiful description over on the Wii U modding guide over on Cheaper Gamer. I'll have a link in the description below. But you can see here. And then go down to the uh, GameCube install section. It's a really good menu. So this one tells you how to go everywhere from your discs, then installing Wii games, and then finally installing GameCube games right here. So, all right, let's switch over to the Wii U and finish this installation. See you on the flip side. So now we put the SD card back in the Wii U. In there and then turn on and it starts up just like always go ahead and take the stylus out turn the tapping on the screens yeah all right I need to go into the homebrew launcher, which I have as an icon here. We need to do this to uh, patch the signature and to uh, install the game. So here we have the SIG patcher. We need to run that. If you don't have SIG, pa SIG patcher 2 HBL, you need to grab it from the Homebrew App Store. I already have it installed, so I'll just tap it to run it. And it just explains it, and you just hit load. And it'll look like it did nothing, but in effect, it patched the signatures on your Wii U, so you can install and play your games that you've installed this way. Now we need to go to the Whoop Installer GX2. So hit this, load. And if we're lucky, we'll see the game right on the screen, and there it is. And if you have uh, multiple games, you can also say select all and install. It'll install one after another. We just want to install Crazy Taxi, install. And it's going to ask you, are you sure? Say yes. And it's going to ask you, do you want to install none? Is the storage within the Wii U, which you probably don't want to use, unless you really want to not use an external drive, but the USB is on the external drive, so I hit that. And now it's going to install onto the hard drive I have attached. There it goes. And if you don't hit the patch first, you're going to see an error message here. That was pretty quick. Successfully installed. All right. Hit OK. And let's play Crazy Taxi. Are you ready for Crazy Taxi? Alright, let's hit the home button to leave the installer. A bit hard to press with it on the dock like this. And again, let's just get out of here. Now every time you play, you will need to run the patcher before you start the game. Otherwise you'll get a little Hard freeze the system, but you can always just reset it from the box and go again, but it's preferably never to freeze the system like that. All right, let's go over a screen and let's see if it shows up in the bottom right corner here. There it is, crazy taxi. See down here? All right, so we hit start. And now it's gonna ask me, do you wanna use the Wii U gamepad? So if you say yes here, then you'll play on the gamepad. And if you say no, then you can play with actual GameCube controllers. So I'm going to say no, because I want to play with GameCube controllers. And you'll notice when you say, so if you say the gamepad, it just goes straight into the game. But if you choose the other option, then it actually will 
start up the Wii vir the virtual Wii, and then you can um, choose on the TV. If I were connected to a TV right now, it would have the options as always. Do I want to play on the gamepad and the TV? Or do I want to play on the gamepad? And so this is why you need a Wii mode. But since I don't have a since I don't have a TV connected to this, I need to choose now press plus on the Wii remote, set the display to only the Wii U gamepad screen. So I'm just gonna push plus. And it's gonna run right there. Nice virtual console entry. Oh, and I can even load up the sound. It plays a virtual console sound, but I wasn't fast enough. <laughs> You'll have to believe me. And it's uh, initializing the memory card. It only does that once, the first time you run the game. And there we're in, Crazy Taxi. Sega. It's loading screen. All right, press A button to create a new file. It's fun to see these do not remove the memory cards when they're on the USB drive. All right, you push start. And you see it, it works just like you expected to. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, the funny thing is now, when you're done playing, you actually turn it off just like you would turn off a regular GameCube. You just go to your console and hit the power button. And then it turns off. Give it a second, boom. So, that's how you can run GameCube games on your Wii U. And if you have any ideas on ways to improve this setup, for example, to not have to patch every time you load it, um, please leave a comment, I'd be happy to hear from you. And I know you can also do the cold boot, but uh, that also risks uh, uh, bricking your console, so I don't really want to try that. Alright, if you enjoyed this video, give me a like, subscribe, and share it with a friend who has a Wii U. And happy gaming!